Hey guys, welcome to Resellers Life. My name is Chris. Thank you so much for joining me. In this episode, I want to talk about two types of eBay models that work, and there's pros and cons to both of them. So if you guys enjoy this type of content, please smash the like button. Consider subscribing because on my show, I talk about the how to build an online store and different strategies. So the two models that I'm talking about today are a cheaper, expensive model in a specific niche. So today I talked to a gentleman in the UK who sells vintage sunglasses. Average sale price 100 pounds, so well over $100 US. 2,600 items in his store. He has one of the best collections of vintage sunglasses in the world. Small and expensive. There's some drawbacks to that though. I want to compare that to, let's say more my store. I'm selling more volume, under $30 employees. Um, it's, it's easy to acquire stock because this stuff is everywhere. So do you want to sell the, the volume store where you can easily hire people? I would say that's the main difference. For me selling cheaper items, almost anybody can work for me. The risk is really low. I don't have a lot of fraud. It's easy to train somebody. The shipping is relatively easy. And I'm, it, there's not a lot of, of parts that can break. There's no testing. There's no repairs. Very little cleaning. Contrast that with a vintage sunglasses store with items over $100 where there's a lot of fraud, there's a lot of rentals, there's a lot of switcheroos, people are buying you know, really rare Christian Dior sunglasses and then sending back a broken pair of prescription glasses they bought at Walmart. So there's fraud. There's also a very high attention to detail required to sell really expensive stuff because people wanna know exactly what they're buying when they're throwing down that kind of cash. If you're gonna spend $300 for a pair of really rare, exquisite sunglasses, even if the item is perfect, you might return it because the fit is not great. So he had mentioned that the return rate is in the 7% range, even for non-fraud. So that's somebody getting it and they genuinely want to return the item. Now you could say no returns, but then customers are going to say, not as described, these sunglasses are smaller than I thought. You have to eat that return shipping anyway. So in this high-end category, it's difficult because you want to offer a premium experience, which in my, opinion, in my opinion is free shipping, free returns, is the highest level of customer experience. But then also you're going to have a high rate of returns and fraud. So there's a lot of eating it when you're at this level selling these high-end goods. People are going to rent your stuff. People are going to steal your stuff. But your average sale price is really high. You might be making $20, $30, $40, $50, $100 per sale. Can you do enough volume to offset that? Or are you gonna be in a situation where you have to basically pray every time you send something that it won't get sent back? So there's a lot of stress in that model, in my opinion, in the sense that you're worried about your stock getting returned. Now, compare that with my model where it's more volume-based. I don't really lose sleep over any items because they're, they're not that expensive. There is fraud, but I'm not losing hundreds of dollars if something goes wrong, I'm losing like 10. So. I sleep well at night knowing that if, if somebody steals one of my items, I lose $10 instead of 500 with a more expensive item. But my headaches come from turnover. If I lose a key worker, I need to replace that person. Hiring, there's more space required. I have to deal with traditionally more suppliers. I have to deal with quality control because items are coming in and I've got to sort through garbage. If you're selling really high-end stuff, there's not a lot of garbage to look through. Everything is high-end. It's just going to be repairing, testing, and then accurately describing it. On the low end, you know, rarely am I repairing something. I'm not really testing stuff because the, the goods, the average sale price is so low. It's a different customer experience. There's a different level that I have to cater to. So I don't necessarily have to do free shipping or free returns because in the used category, there's not a lot of competition. So there's only four used pair of this in this style and this size in the world. So free shipping, not free shipping, free returns, not free returns, doesn't matter so much when your, your item is cheap and there's not a lot of them. Uh, it only matters more if you're selling in a highly competitive category, like let's say video games. If you're selling a brand new video game, I would say you probably need to do promoted listings, um, have the best price, the best pictures, free shipping, free returns. This is me talking about retailing a game that you can buy at Walmart or Target, true retail. Okay, so not a rare game, that's different. We're talking about a common game. 
you probably need to be the cheapest and have the best customer experience in order to land that sale. But again, most people are not retailers. You're not buying wholesale from the manufacturer at volume. You don't have the cost of a brick and mortar. So you're just somebody working at home. So I have to shout out Jack, video game sourcing, my friend on Instagram, and I met him in person. He's a super nice guy who mentioned there's a lot of wholesale courses going on right now. A lot of people pushing for wholesale and me too. I'm trying to teach people how to do that to a certain degree. But you reaching out as somebody in your house, trying to convince a manufacturer that you are special, you're not. You're not special. You're just somebody at home trying to get goods that everybody else is trying to get. You can't really stand out. So as a reseller, you're, you're kind of always looking for deals. And I think that's important to recognize. You're looking for deals. So that becomes your identity. As a reseller, you are a deal hunter. Are you looking for the expensive goods that you might need to repair and put a little extra love into? Are you looking for the hottest deals right now? So you're trending, you're looking for 80% off clearance. Are you hunting for those types of things? Or are you a liquidation hunter, clearance hunter? Are you buying old stock in volume? There's different tricks of the trade in all of these different methods. As an example for me, when I'm looking for a supplier, a supply deal, instead of asking for a discount, I might say, hey, you have a lot of stock. I would like to purchase a large amount of it. Is there any better you can do on the pricing? I like doing that because it gives them a little bit of control and they get the low ball themselves. Instead of just saying, can I get a discount? Because Think about how you feel when you have a $100 item listed and somebody offers you $5 for it. It's a, it's a visceral reaction. Now, if somebody were to say, I notice you have one item for $100, could you do better if I buy 10 of your items? Then of course, now they have some skin in the game, they're willing to buy a larger order. So maybe that seller is willing to take less profit per item to get more profit overall. This is really important because you as a reseller are looking for stock and you've got to give some leverage to, you've got to add some leverage so that you can buy stuff. So one of the things that I'm disappointed in myself in is that I have thousands, tens of thousands of subscribers, but I actually have no way of helping my subscribers right now bulk purchase. There were three people in my group last year that purchased a hundred thousand video games together. Um, I would like to facilitate more things like that. I feel like the collective buying power of everybody listening to me right now is enormous. And I'm not taking advantage of that. There's people in everyone sort of doing it on their own. So let me know what you guys think and how I should organize wholesale. I've tried it before in the group, but it's too time consuming because I need to vet both the buyer and the seller. And I don't really want to be the middleman trying to collect 1% on the deal. That's too much work. So how can we work together as as resellers to purchase bulk lots. Buying it all always gets the best price, but again, sometimes buying it all is, is in the millions of dollars. So let me know in the comment section below what you guys think. Like, comment, subscribe. All of my videos are sponsored by my reseller field guide, which is 35 bucks with code YouTube. It's how I run my business. It should help you give you the overview of how to earn $1,000 per week. And that gets most people a full-time living in the United States. So appreciate your time. Until next time, make progress daily.